Hey Lou, how are you? I'm doing good. How's it going? Good. good, good. Uh, so this is the second year, the advanced piano program. Uh, we pick up where the first year leaves off uh, with a lot of home service and field work and also uh, move into a lot of shop work, uh, action rebuilding, uh, structural rebuilding, um, fundamentals of woodworking and uh, that sort of stuff. Students spend a lot of time in the field uh, tuning pianos in the area uh, and we have a grant through the Boston Public to service pianos at the Boston Public Schools so those pianos get serviced and it's a uh, pretty good experience for students to see these instruments. So That's great. And while we have you here, Lou, um, there's a question that just came across the chat where someone asks, can you just share what the difference is between basic piano and advanced piano? Yeah, yeah. So whereas basic piano, the, the, the focus is tuning a piano on-site service um, and learning the, the fundamentals and really scratching the surface on how to functionally regulate an action, repair an action, uh, diagnose pianos, uh, we dive a lot deeper in that. Um, instead of doing something once or the final pass, we fully disassemble pianos and build them back up. Um, so, you know, instead of just regulating an action that's already there, we'll take one apart, uh, choose parts, which is something we're doing right now, um, and it really uncovers a lot of the subtleties of action regulation and uh, how, a, how a piano works. So it's a much deeper dive is the big thing. And then, you know, the big focus for most people who do the program, they'll be servicing pianos in the field. So that's a big focus of what we, we talk about is, is continuing to refine our service techniques, um, you know, working with customers, talking with customers, listening to customers, and providing the service that that piano and that customer needs. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. So we can do a little tour around. Please. Um, we've got uh, Susan and Corey over here. We can start here. How are you? And they're doing uh, action part selection. We're doing, at this point of the year, we're looking, uh, diving deep into our, our project pianos and action work. And so they're doing action part selection. Um, and they can tell you about what, what they're getting into. Sure. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Corey. That's Susan. Um, so we're working on a piano that was built in approximately 1905. And it's just, it's time for some new parts. So we have this wonderful resource with all these parts kits with all these options from different companies. And we learn about action geometry, which is um, the angles and the measurements within the action of the piano and how those all go together to make it playable and regulatable. And we have to pick parts that match, either match the old parts or can create that playability. Um, so right now we've been looking at parts made by a company called Tokiwa and right now Susan is going through the piano tech catalog so that we can make sure we have the appropriate parts number. Right. Yeah, because um, precision is really key here. We want to make sure um, from this catalog, as you can see, like, you know, one, two, three, they might look kind of all the same to, um, I would say commoners, but for us, for <laughs> it's, <me>. it's <laughs> so important to make sure, you know, for instance, this is exact in that 15 millimeters. So we have all these like tools. I'm sure you have seen like um, all these stuff from first year or from the basic piano technology, but um, we just have to know which tools to utilize to make sure we have, you know, the exact same thing to match with the piano because like Corey said, the piano is more than 115 years 115, old. 116. And the part that we are, you know, using, rebuilding or putting it back is pretty modern. So we need to make sure the modern stuff works, you know, best to this, this instrument. So a lot of math. A lot of measuring, measuring again, measuring a third time, then maybe writing it down and measuring it a fourth time. Right, so. and ratio, and we always talk about circle of refinement. So not just one time, two times, maybe coming back from a break and making sure, you know, we were, you know, doing a good job. Yeah, so we put on a new hammer shank and because we have, these are, we can't just rip apart the old parts and put on a new hammer. So we have sample hammers that we have to measure this length and make sure that it matches the previous set. And we use those to help figure out how to regulate things. Right now, this usually fits in here, this weapon. So we're taking it off right now to find out what the part number would be if we ordered it. But you have to, you, every single one is different. You can see the difference just between these two. This one has a spring that comes across the top, whereas this one, the spring is inside. Sometimes they have these cute little rest cushions and sometimes they don't. 
So it's, it's lots of things to think about. Fascinating. Oh, sorry to share about this panel. Um, originally, we were a little bit adventurous. We wanted to start with, we know the piano is, is old enough, so we were like, why don't we try something? Um, um, Super modern. Yeah, yeah, so yes, you can see there are carbon fiber parts. We put them in, we tried. Um, it, they didn't really work, but we were really persistent. We keep trying, and then to make sure it could get to the specs that we like, but at the end of the day, it you know, it is what it is. If it doesn't work, we move on and try other parts. Back to more traditional looking mm -hmm. parts. So, yeah. So um, there's a lot of like playing, going back and forth, and just not to give up, I guess. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. We get to get all our regulation tools out and create a mess on the bench, which is a lot of fun. That's great. It's great that you get to experiment. It's great that I feel like you're very quality minded. Um, and I feel like this is this theme across piano technologies is so interesting. And I feel like when we were in basic piano, there was a lot of talk about um, uh, bringing organization, bringing harmony. And I feel like this is everything is when you hear someone play something at such a high level, this is all of this like hard work and living science and math that, yeah. that goes behind it. We were actually talking earlier that um, <laughs> we can't imagine going out into the field after first year because mm -hmm. this is taking this has been taking everything to the next level mm -hmm. and it's been making a lot of connections that I don't think I would have made otherwise. So yeah. that's that's interesting and something I hear a lot uh, in admissions visiting the programs year after year that. A lot of times students in advanced piano, most of them will go through basic piano before they come here. And in some ways there's this concept that, that being here is kind of a, in a way a reward to put into practice next level what, what came out of basic piano technology. Uh, and certainly when we surveyed um, graduates, uh, many people that may have thought of coming here that then graduated out of basic piano said that oh, they just kind of wish they had uh, come to this program. And then certainly because, you know, everyone's story is completely different. Everyone's set of circumstances, what their goals are and things like that, that they're, they're, I'm sure there's a lot of people that have graduated basic going right out into the field and are, and are uh, happy uh, tuning. So uh, everyone's experience completely different. And, Thank you so much uh, for, for sharing what it is you're working on here. Sure, our pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, we can head over here next. Uh, we got Scott and Lindsay are working on uh, the pedal liar. We have an example of an assembled pedal liar, uh, which is the pedal system, and an example of a disassembled one. They can tell you what they've been doing. So my name is Lindsay. Uh, what we have here, this is not on our piano. It's one of the other project pianos. It's from a Steinway. And it's fully assembled. Uh, and I'm sure everybody knows where it belongs on the piano if you play the piano. Uh, so underneath. Um, and so looking at it, so we were like looking at repairs and stuff. Um, the liar gets a lot of um, stress because Constant. like all the time because of the gravity and then also a lot of uh, pianists are putting most of their weight on the, these pianos, so you can kind of see like right here It's kind of separating a little bit mm -hmm. and so that will be fixed later on in the project um, But we can move over to Scott Where <laughs> that's not an issue. Though. Yeah, it's so already been repaired. You can see here that it's got oh. these Thanks, Lindsay. new shims in here. Mm -hmm. and it's got a lot of modern glue there um, and that was to help with this joint here that had been failing, which is inevitable in pianos. We took the bottom apart, so the pedals sit here in this cavity, and they sit on this. The back of them rests on these. We call them raviolis, because they look like raviolis. They do. <laughs> <laughs> and we um, replaced them here. These are new raviolis. They get kind of just compressed and worn over time, and there's a lot of other felt and leather components um, that help with noise abatement, just help things not click and um, make noise as you use the pedal. And then we'll be putting this back together and then putting it back under a piano. And are those raviolis like a combination of 
what is it, leather and Yeah, something? so we use a leather substitute called Exane, mm -hmm. um, but this was traditionally, originally, and you'll see it on this one, um, buckskin. And then there's a punching, thank you, this is a, a front punching that goes under a key, and it stops the key travel, and we just put a front punching under there, and then you glue it and clamp it all together. Nice. It's made just like a ravioli. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Mm -hmm. We can head in the other room. They're actually working on the next part of the pedal system. Okay. Uh, which is the, the trap work. So we can head over there. And All right. Get that going on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So this is the bench room where we tend to keep it cleaner, tends to stay a little quieter, um, you know, not as dusty, that sort of thing. Um, and then over here is the machine room where we have our power tools and do a lot of our noisier. More Great. Type of and there's a partition here for, for this. Hi, how are you? Hi. Uh, we have Shin and Maddie and Elijah, and they can talk about, uh, I think they'll start by talking about the, the trap work system, which is that, that system of, of levers over there. Great. Hi, Rob. Yeah. How are you, Shin? Hi, good, good. Um, it's my pleasure to, uh, to talk about something that's uh, under the key bag. And it's something that we use all the time, which is the pedal system and also the trip work. So basically, it's the connection system between the pedal and the keyboard. So when you pedal down, each pedal has its specific function. For example, uh, this is the ship pedal. So basically, it's, right, it's always uh, on the left side. So when you play and when you pedal down and the volume, will be less and if and the middle one which is the sustenuno and the function of it is uh, when you play and then you pedal down the middle pedal the um, the specific notes will be sustained the, the notes you played and the main difference is between the right pedal and the mid pedal this is the right pedal okay. that a lot of people use it because all the notes you play, they will be sustained, but not just one. The mid pedal is just for one note. All the notes you play uh, specifically, and this one is for all the dampers. Like, and then if there are like um, right now we're replacing all the parts, like all the leather, all the solo leather, like all the stuff that will be squeezed over time. So probably we can have many yeah. to talk about a little bit of this yeah, stuff. Okay, okay, that's great. Cool. Thank you. Um, so all these parts have you know different types of leather. We have shoe leather, and then we have a um, this Etsyan leather, um, which is not real animal leather. I don't actually know what it's. It's a, we just synthetic, call it a synthetic leather. Box yeah. Yeah. Um, so we have here's an example of an old used, very gross <laughs> leather that was on there, and it was replaced with this one. Um, so we have to cut them all to size and make them the same height and all that. Um, and so we have all different pieces of leather, all of these. Um, and went through and did that. We repainted the blocks um, and repainted this bar. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah. Right, and I can, um, I can show everybody a little bit of how we punch the leather. Okay. Yep. So this is axing. Oh, this is synthetic leather. So so this is circle punch set. So usually when we uh, try to make the uh, make this leather. Then we pre-measure the diameter or the width, the length of the worn out part. And then we draw it. And then we just choose the size based on the diameter or the length or the width. And then we choose the one like this. Okay. Or for example, so we put the letter here. And then we push it. So it's a spring here, and then 
we just push it all the way and then pout it. And then this can, this is the new part. Did you just do that in one hit, Shin? Uh, no, I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I, I died like, what, uh, 30 minutes ago? Great. Yeah, well, just in case to show you guys that, uh, how we make this. And this is important if we uh, did a good job on pre-measuring, then uh, we have to train it, we have to spend more time. Right. And, and time is really important in rebu piano rebuilding processes. Cool, thank you. Yeah, no problem. So we also have, um, uh, Lysha will show you a little bit about what is really our first woodworking project of the year, which is, uh, you know, first chance that students are introduced to a lot of the machine tools, the bandsaw, drill presses, uh, table saws, things like that. And it's this um, jack-in-the-box, which is a tool that basically every service technician really needs. It is a jack in a box, and it helps us when we need to work on uh, any kind of legs on a grand piano, if we need to take a leg off or a wheel isn't working or anything like that. Uh, it's something that lets one technician safely do that. Otherwise, I mean, these are not very light instruments and you'll need, you'll need some help. So Elisha can uh, show us that jack in the box. That's great. So this is what we call jack in the box. It's a small jack in the box. Oh. So we will use this to lift up the piano. Put the blocks between and you just lift up with the jack. And does every student in this program make one of these? can fix the caster, you can take out the leg and repair and um, yeah and it comes down like this nicely or you can also lift up the yeah, like this. Oh yeah. So yeah. But having the jack in the box allows it's you easy. your hands to be freer and yeah, it's yeah. a little bit easier. You don't need multiple people for that. Work, yeah. So. And I, I noticed when you open the, the door uh, that there's uh, there's a the way this the way this is put together here, there's a groove so that this has the mm -hmm. the strength to be able to yep. um, to be able to lift the piano and, and not break. And then can, can I ask you, Lou, did someone here invent this? Is this something that's, that's part of the industry that people, that people make? To, um, what's the background of the Jack in the Box? It's, uh, it's not something that was invented here as far as I know. It's something that you, uh, supply houses make and sell them. Uh, it's probably a couple hundred dollar tool to purchase. Um, and so it's something, you know, it's, it's out there in the field and there's all kinds of technicians who have their own little version of them. Um, but it's something that most every technician who works on grand pianos has one. Uh, and a lot of folks will just keep it in their trunk for when they need to work on a, on a, on a leg or a caster or something like that. Um, and it, you know, we, we've made, through the, the history of the program, we've done different woodworking, program, woodworking projects as our first project. Mm -hmm. um, and this is, you know, we're doing this one these days because it's, you know, very, it's, it's a good example of using these machines. Uh, it's a good introduction to it. But it's also very useful and, you know, anybody working on pianos would, would do well, will, will need this at some point in their career. So, um, so it's just, it's out there in the field and it's extremely useful and it's oh, such a, a, a saver for your body. You know, having to lift instruments is not, you right. know, there's piano movers and we are not piano movers. We right. are piano technicians. So, right. uh, yeah. But physically, there's, there's some amount of demand and that demand is also about physical repetition. So, so this, this tool is super helpful yeah, here. Yeah. Um, cool. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. Um, I had asked uh, when we were in basic piano technology, just because 
we're trying to get an understanding for our viewers who might be thinking of moving in this direction. A lot of people will ask when they call or when they visit, is there someone there that's like me, you know, that has my background or something? And usually the answer is something like, yes, but I also feel like I would like to ask the students here, if you don't mind, to share what it was you were doing before you got here um, and kind of what made you decide to, to come in, in this direction. Uh, well, I had a little, you know, piano business started in just short period of time, but I feel like, you know, uh, I have so limited uh, skill that uh, I always wanted to do more. And, you know, the technicians, I knew they, they were talking about North Bennett and yeah, I decided to apply and yeah, finished the first year last year and came here the second year. Now I, I know how much I don't know. So <laughs> yeah, it's it's great program. How long were you working on pianos before you came here? It's just about a year about and a year. COVID hit uh -huh. and I was actually uh, taking lessons from Sean with who became a new instructor here, and uh, he recommended to come here. It, it, what he said was, we can, I was, he was teaching me a couple of hours a week, and he, he calculated the hours, and he said, well, we can do this another 15 years <laughs> together, or you can go to North Bennett and get it done in nine months. So that was the deal. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Shin, what about yourself? Uh, yeah, um, in the place I came from, we don't have that kind of apprenticeship. We don't have the specific professional school that would you know, give a proper training to piano technician. And because I, I love music, and since I was like really young, I, you know, like what, eight, nine years of old, and I've been always wanting to do something about music. I love music a lot. So uh, I, I've been thinking about doing this uh, when I like was 15, 16. And then I, because I have worked on different jobs before and I bet a lot of people who are uh, like, we're watching the video right now. You probably have the same thoughts that uh, I'm working on different kinds of job, but what's the one I like the most? Now I have that calling in my, in my mind and I just try to find the thing I love the most. So I've been thinking about it since I was 16 and then I decided to do this when I was 31. So it took me 15 years to find the thing I love the most. So you know, I Google it and then I found North Spanish School, which has a really good reputation in the field, around the world, in the United States, in every part of the piano technology. It's really good, it's really great. And, um, Six years ago, I came to North Bennett to study at a basic piano technology program. And after that, and I went back to work as a full-time technician. Then uh, I was gonna come back to do the second year, which is the piano, uh, advanced piano technology program, but uh, COVID hit, so I postponed. But there's like every second, since I graduated from first year, like every second after that, I always wanna come back my passion and because and I have learned a lot so much about like from instructors and from my classmates from staff about their life values about their personal stories ups and downs I've been grateful for any seconds that I'm here and I think yeah the school is something about technology about skills and that skills we learn can um, make us move forward in a long path, you know, in a long run. Right? And another part of the school, because it's so fast, is because you can have, make a lot of friends, and they can be your lifelong friends. So it's, not more, it's more than a school, you know? it's, it's like a family. To me, it's a family thing. So every time when I come back, I feel I'm just blown to this place, and I'm grateful for that. And there's not, not um, I couldn't thank the school a, a lot, no. Just this this morning, I have imagined. So, if anyone who's watching the video right now, I'm a perfect example of 
what you can ever imagine. If you come to the program, you know, I'll bet you will have a really good, uh, uh, like you will have a really good understanding uh, in your skills, in the profession, and probably in your life. Shin, thank you so much, yeah. and we're grateful that you're here too, uh, and and everybody. Um, Will you share with us your story of what you were up to before you came here and why you decided to come? Yeah, um, I came all the way from Hawaii. Um, I got a piano in high school and someone came to do, tune it and my mind was blowing and like it took me six years to like make it out this way but I finally did. Worth the wait and worth every penny. That's great. Um, and will you return to Hawaii when you graduate, do you think, or just open to opportunities? I don't know yet. <laughs> um, yeah, it's kind of, there's plenty of work everywhere, so it's really hard to decide where I want to end up. So that's, that's a challenge in itself. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. Good. Well, hopefully it's a good challenge. Yes. <laughs> and then just out of curiosity, what were you doing for work before you transitioned oh, this yeah. way? Um, I worked on a cell tower crew. My parents do own a company and do contract work, and I did a lot of 911 cell tower testing. So I was all over Hawaii, going to cell tower sites in the middle of nowhere, and like calling 911 and working with their department. And so that was a whole experience in itself. Yeah. Um, so I didn't do a whole lot of piano work before coming here. Like close to zero experience mm -hmm. um, and so I mean even then it wasn't too difficult learning the trade so that was kind of nice too. Yeah um, but I think the work you did before physical labor mm -hmm. and project management Yep. so I feel like those are some really good transferable skills to oh, yeah. come in this direction. Totally yeah. Cool yeah. thank you Maddie. Cool thanks. Anything else we can show you at the moment? We can uh, talk to other people's backgrounds too. Yeah, we can. What about yours? Oh, You're also a graduate. Yeah, yeah. I graduated in 07 from the second year program. Um, and I was uh, I, not a musician by any means, which I think is important to know. You really don't need to be a musician. If you, if you, I certainly had a musical background, I would say, but I uh, was never good at it. So, And it certainly helps. Uh, a little bit of music theory and just familiarity with the sounds of a piano very much can be helpful, but um, there's so many different facets. There's people who are very mechanically minded and they can find their little niche and there's people who are very musically minded and they find their path and it's very, uh, you know, there's sort of room for all kinds of different uh, strengths. So anyways, I was, I'm from the Bay Area, uh, San Francisco. And so I, I was there uh, living in a, in a house and I was playing the piano a lot and uh, it just started having issues that we, you know, I came to find out later what they were and why. No surprises. Uh, it was in a wet basement and I never even considered getting a tune that was not even on the radar. Um, and, you know, meanwhile, working two or three different jobs at a time and, you know, just kind of going through life. And somebody said, hey, you seem to like working on, I started taking the piano apart and, and someone said to me, hey, that, you know, that's a job, right? And I said, what do you mean this is a job? <laughs> I, you know, uh, I don't even know what that means. And so I started looking into it and started to look for apprenticeships and look at other schools. At the time, there were three main schools in the States. Um, and, you know, I applied at a couple uh, and was accepted here and, you know, was pretty, you know, pretty quickly knew I, you know, for me personally, I felt I needed to do that second year. It was pretty clear. I wanted to be in a room with this sort of stuff in it and making dust and gluing things together and just sort of living in a shop was very attractive to me. So, uh, so I did that, um, you know, went through the second year and then moved to North Carolina to work in a shop right away, um, which was, you know, I didn't really feel like I wanted to wait build up a clientele and hopefully get to rebuild a piano someday. I wanted to find a place where I could rebuild pianos right away. Um, so I moved somewhere I'd never been before and had a great experience. It was just a lot of fun and, you know, uh, just couldn't have duplicated it anywhere else. Like Shin said, some of these people and my, my uh, classmates of mine, uh, and then some of my early coworkers are some, still some of my favorite people and, you know, close friends and still, you know, in touch. Uh, frequently um, and so you know it, it I was there for about five years and then I moved back to the Bay Area for five years started my own business 
Uh, and I've been back here for, uh, this is my sixth year teaching. So, um, so yeah, that's, you know, that's where we got to now. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Lou, thank you so much. Absolutely. <clears throat> Let me get an eye on the time here. We got until right about noon. And I've seen there's a couple of other questions on the chat here. We're good if that clock is good. Um, there's been some questions about admissions. Um, and if you visit the website, all of the requirements for admissions are laid out there. Um, that's how we qualify people. There's also a lot of other uh, great information about skills and qualities that we look for in people. Um, I will share that, uh, you know, we are considered an undergraduate institution. We're non-degree granting, but you can apply for FAFSA uh, as an American citizen or as someone who has a green card. Um, and then uh, North Bennett Street School Scholarship, if you apply for FAFSA, uh, we will automatically put you into consideration for North Bennett Street School Scholarship. It is mostly need-based, uh, and we will take a look at your FAFSA application and look for any markers or demographics that we can um, that we can see to connect you with whatever uh, the scholarship is that we have to offer to help support uh, the training here at North Bennett Street School. I did see another question about a scholarship for international students and I'm very happy uh, to share with people that this year, we launched North Bennett Street School Scholarship for uh, international students. Um, there is a tool that just went up on our financial aid page. Uh, it is a net price calculator for international students. Um, it takes you about 10 or 11 minutes to fill that out. You'll get a ballpark of, of how we'll be able to support you. And once we can qualify you for admissions for North Bennett Street School and then take a look at what kind of financial aid award uh, we have for you, um, uh, then, then we can work with you um, to help you to transition to training here at North Bennett Street School. How are you, Debbie? I'm good. Good. I'd like to just say welcome to everybody, now that I'm away from the chat. Um, and just want to say, I really encourage you to come visit, come for an interview, come see the space, although you've seen it really well here um, with this video. Um, and just another word from, about uh, advanced piano, I would like to say um, all the second year students go out on tuning calls, Lewis had mentioned that, um, but that really helps them to hone their skills, um, troubleshooting, in real time at Mrs. Jones's house at the Boston Public Schools. Um, it, it's huge. They come across problems. They bring them back to the classroom the next morning. They have pictures. They, we talk about the issues that they came across. Sometimes they have questions and we can answer them. They can go back and take care of the piano. Um, it, it's a great round table kind of environment. Um, a lot of questions answered on a daily basis, um, a lot of conversation um, about all, all things pianos. Um, in, as a second year student, you're, you've got all this information that was packed into your head in the first year, and in the second year you can start unpacking it and start putting it to real use and start seeing the piano as a whole instrument and not just all these little tiny parts and it's not just replacing one string, you're replacing a whole piano's worth of strings and um, doing everything um, for the whole piano. So the, the advanced program really, really takes you from a beginning tuner to an advanced tuner. Um, a lot more hands-on information, a lot more um, whole piano, I keep saying. Great. Um, Debbie, uh, we've been asking people about their backgrounds and and we've shared earlier that the majority of students um, that are in advanced piano uh, do come from our basic piano technology program. However, uh, we, as a separately accredited program, we do um, recruit and, and bring on board uh, students that, that uh, come from out in the world that are at a level where 
coming to advanced piano seems like their next good career uh, step. I'm pretty sure that you're a living example of someone that 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 was your pathway here. Um, will you just share with us uh, a little bit about um, uh, what that means uh, for you um, as a faculty member when you look for people, uh, uh, external candidates for advanced piano technology? Yeah, I did come in um, directly into second year. I had apprenticed with a piano technician who taught me how to tune, taught me how to do um, the basic repairs, some regulation, um, and had started my own business doing tunings and repairs um, and applied to come in to second year. I had hoped, I didn't think I would get into second year, but I had hoped, and I did. They had me tune um, a piano and they had me talk about regulation, talk about repairs, and took me into second year. That's the same process that would happen. If someone wants to come in uh, directly to second year, you have to come in for an interview. You can expect to be asked to tune a piano, to talk about regulation, to talk and maybe do some repairs. Um, we need to make sure that whoever comes into second year is at a par on level with the rest of the classmates here. We don't want to be doing a lot of first year stuff in second year. Um, that's not what all these other students are here for. So we're hope, we would hope that whoever's coming in directly to second year is at the same level as the rest of the classmates here. That's fair. And I'd say uh, over the last decade or so, I can think of probably maybe five or seven people that have, that have uh, uh, come on that pathway uh, to right. advanced. Um, I, I also am curious if you could speak a little bit about, uh, I feel like we have uh, the potential to connect people with work over the summer uh, at a number of different places. Uh, and as we are all about employment and those kind of you know, formal or informal internships can be so valuable for people as resume builders, as ways to network and leverage for future employment. Um, would you talk a little bit about uh, those opportunities? Sure. We have opportunities with um, Tanglewood Music Festival, Aspen Music Festival, Interlochen on some years. Uh, Brevard has happened before. Um, there are other smaller ones yep. kind of all over. Up in the, uh, northern New England, there's a couple. Uh, yep. Vermont and Maine, I think they each have one. Um, they, they look for... Um, Interns. Interns. Yeah. <laughs> I'm uh -huh. sorry. Right. Yeah, they look for interns. Um, you don't get paid the most money in the world, but the experience is incredible. It takes you from being able to tune one piano to maybe two pianos a day to three or four pianos a day. Your tuning speed goes way up. Your accuracy improves um, loads and loads. Um, the experience is fantastic. It looks good on your resume. Most, most of them have a, a pretty reputable head technician yep. who, who they do, most of them do a really good job of incorporating education in that process. Yep. So you have to work hard, there's a lot to be done, um, but they set aside time and make sure that you're not just, uh, just a workhorse for them, you're actually they're giving back to you. And it's, it's been really uh, kind of inspiring to see yep. these head technicians add that and, and really it's part of their, some of their focus now of the whole of the whole festival, uh, and it, it's been a great experience for you know. I think the work that they get out of their interns is better because of it, and so the experience of the interns is better because of it. And uh, so there's a fair amount of that, and just endless uh, job opportunities. Yes. We get emails constantly of of job opportunities so, all over the country. Yeah. Um, and yes. wish we could ha wish we could put out more graduates every yeah, year. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, that's great. That's great to hear. Um, yes, we are a career school. We're all about training for employment, um, getting people the skill and the fundamentals uh, and the confidence uh, to go out and get the work. And as you hear here, uh, those opportunities are, are, are very real. Uh, I also, in walking around talking with people today, I don't know if this is just because I'm maybe too close to the mountain, but there's a theme also that where people People start to do some research, get some experience, uh, and then they reach a point where maybe the person that they're working with, the technician, mentor, whatever, uh, you know, says, oh, okay, I think your next 
your step might be to research North Bennett Street School. Um, that, that does happen a lot, um, especially the past few years, and maybe COVID is part of that. We have a one week summer program through continuing education that has happened in the past, but has not for the past few summers because of COVID. Uh, one week introduction to piano technology is possible. Hopefully we'll have it this summer. Um, hasn't been determined yet, okay. but um, that would, that's always a nice hands-on taste test, so to speak. You do a little tuning, you do some repairs. We talk about pianos, a little bit of regulation. Um, so someone can determine whether this is really what they want to do, whether they're cut out for this or not. See, it, 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 it's here at this school, you get to work in the, in the environment and see if um, it's something that you want to continue. That's great. Thanks for sharing. And Debbie brings up a great point. Uh, you know, continuing education because of the pandemic uh, has been on a bit of a hiatus uh, for the last year or so. And uh, there was a relaunch uh, last Monday. So if anybody is curious uh, and, and wants to participate, all of those opportunities are laid out there uh, for the shorter introductory courses to many of the things connected here. Um, there's also opportunities for uh, experiences that are uh, connected to the type of work that happens here uh, at North Bennett Street School. So uh, I encourage you to um, visit our website and take a look. All right, I just want to say thank you to everybody here in Advance Piano, um, all the students. Uh, thank you so much uh, for, for sharing uh, with us today. Um, we're grateful um, that you're here uh, and, that, and that you shared what it is you're up to and, and parts of your stories. Um, thank you so much uh, and good luck with all of the work you're doing. Thank you. Thank you.